First of all, I'd like to thank everybody that follows me on YouTube, my 473 subscribers. I first started out thinking I was going to automatically blow up, and obviously there's a lot of work that you have to put into YouTube, a lot of dedication. You have to pretty much to study a lot of things that you're going to do because sometimes I think I know everything and then I get into it and I'm like, um, um, uh, and you have to realize and take a step back and say all right I gotta do a little bit more research because the stuff that I'm doing or putting up on YouTube I do not do anything on purpose if it if I make a mistake or anything so with that being said I, I appreciate everybody that likes everything gives me comments and gives me constructive criticism I really appreciate it because then I can get better at what I'm doing so then I can make everybody else better like my my motto is is that when you succeed I succeed so when I have the team mentality and everything so with that being said I would I would like to start with uh, doing a tuna ball now I know everybody probably is like oh he's doing this or he's doing that again or anything like this but once again this is to show people the basic stuff and when I have people that are subscribed to me that are directly messaging me asking me like hey can you do this because they don't want to put it on the comments or get hammered on it which is I know the feeling is to put something out there and then get smashed on it so uh, I don't mind it I don't mind it at all I have the link on my Facebook too so I appreciate it and so one of my uh, subscribers has asked to do the whole plunking setup like not just the the basically the focal point will be the tuna balls but they said can you show everything like you started from so when I started from when, and I can go into hours of talking about breaking down about how I've started and I'm not gonna do that so I'm gonna try to stick to the basics that I have around here on the table so the first thing when you're plunking is that when I had to do is I started out with rebar I don't even think it was rebar it might have been expanded metal whatever it might have been a piece of wood I don't even know it was something cheesy and then I put electric tape around it and then I ran uh, uh, what was it I can't even remember what it was plastic it could have been anything I eventually started moving up and upgrading to trying to figure out better ways and more effective ways and the thing is is that your pole holders are magnets to be stolen or grow legs and walk off so after I first invested into a piece of rebar and then had my cousin Dustin he was making these for me and then he was making the colors uh, my favorite color is blue so he's putting them on there and he's like spray painting them and then he put the foots or dots or we put stuff on there uh, to show that these are ours so like if anybody has them then we'll be like yo those are ours same thing with when I do Facebook I'll put little dots or put little uh, dog ears or glitches into my into my posts so I know when people will print screen it and then put it on theirs because it came from mine so keep that in mind something that has a trademark that you do subliminally so what I decided to do was I don't have my tape measure I don't think I have a tape measure so we're gonna do this the way the one way I know is your my finger from my first crease is an inch so we're gonna go one I'd say two and a half inches so this is how far it is so my from my wrist to my elbow is a foot so they're about a foot for that and then the rebar is about approximately we'll go one two three feet for the rebar now I I go over and I mention this all the time Gene's farm shop is where I go to have all my stuff done 
and I was telling Dave that over there that the farm shop I was like hey these things are walking off all the time I try to leave things and I, I, I'm a trustworthy person so I leave things there so and my scaffolds expecting people not to mess with them or at least tell me that they're using them and these were walking off after my cousin Dustin was putting them all together and so I asked uh, Dave if he can start putting them together with these so I gave you the dimensions roughly and then we start putting my my initials definitely in them so I know if people will walk off with them so if you have a farm shop a metal shop or anything that's near you uh, this is something I would suggest that you invest in I always say invest in whatever your budget is to get the best your budget can get so I know a lot of us don't have a big budget but this is one thing I did trading is another thing that you want to look into if you have something to trade do then try to do that but this is what it is uh, make sure that they have the rebar approximately about four or five inches up there so when you're banging around on it and it will get bent up of course it will but so this is my pole holder uh, I have <clears throat> excuse me I have a lot of these pole holders and I had them all with my initials put into them so that that way they don't walk off the next thing uh, with the tuna balls is is that uh, let's see uh, we'll go over the ahi tuna steaks these Martin Panthers part Panther Martins God I always mess that up I was following me everywhere they want to fish with me even when I'm not fishing so it's the ahi tuna steaks now the one thing too is can you grab me that tuna can over there please that you have I, or whatever by the tomatoes is that you're gonna get your ahi tuna steaks like this in the packs or you'll get them whenever you see these available make sure that you go ahead and grab them like if they're five or ten bucks just keep grabbing them through the summer or the winter time is the best, best time to do it so that way you can like build it up and because I go through my tuna steaks all fast now I get I've been getting asked that quite frequently what do you use tuna tuna this and that and the thing is too is that a lot of people will use regular tuna bumblebee tuna and stuff like that but it doesn't hold it doesn't hold worth anything into your you will probably cast it out and it'll hold maybe I don't know five or ten minutes and then it just flings out through your mesh or whatever you guys whatever anybody is using so I try not to hammer down because I know what it feels like when it gets done to me on YouTube or Facebook when people I don't know well that's a different discussion but when people do it to me I don't like it so I do not recommend any using tuna out of a can uh, you can use the oil to dump on there afterwards or something like that but I don't recommend it so what I was asked was about how to make a tuna ball and I, I've been asked uh, quite frequently so what I'm gonna do is get into this and I said I'm gonna take my time for my bro so I and I'm going to do this slowly and it's gonna be a long video so if, if you already know this then you know give it a thumbs up or whatever or go ahead and check something else out because uh, this is for everybody that really is starting to learn how to do all this so I told I, I told my bro I would totally take my time on making this video and making it count so the first thing is is that we have our ahi tuna or our tuna steaks now I really like the tuna steaks because it holds together and I use it for everything I do but I'm not gonna go into my icicle setup too much into it because it's competition to when I'm out there fishing and I don't want everybody doing the same thing I'm doing and catch more fish than me <laughs> I'm being honest I really I really feel like it's a competition so I'm showing you the Columbia setup kind of slash icicle Yakima River kind of semi plunking drifting bouncing whatever you want to call it so I already have um, my tuna uh, steaks get good scissors too or shears or whatever you want because it makes a big difference because you're going to be cutting a lot of things and anything you do when you when you're cutting you want the best or at least your budget whatever the best your budget can now when I take my tuna steak out uh, they're not going to be very big they average from five to twenty bucks depending on the stakes or if you're buying them in the pack now when you open these up and it's the, the it has totally um, 
fully melted or defrosted, whatever you want to call it. Correct me if you want. Uh, I'm going to probably use a different language. Uh, my, I don't know what, I, I don't know, it's not language, but maybe my slang or anything that I'm using is going to be different than a lot of people, so get over it. Uh, help us, help everybody out. And now, the one thing too is that Okay, so back to the tuna steaks, right? We're going to have all this in here, the, the juices, the blood, the tuna blood. Now, if you have an empty tuna bottle or uh, gel or bloody tuna, take this and dump it in there. Or if you still have it like this and you're doing your first check on your hooks or anything, then dump it on there. I s swear that this stuff, don't waste it because it's very valuable to use in, in your future. So, okay, so now we got our, our tuna steak out. Don't lose, don't take off with your scissors. Don't put them up yet, right? So now the other thing is too, is that I use Bubba blades. This is one of the things that I've come across that has become uh, invaluable to me that I really want to use all the time. And it's, I really like my Bubba blades. So. I will always use them. You'll see me cutting with the elk. You'll see me doing my steaks with them. You'll see me doing everything. I do everything with them because I just love having a sharp knife. All right, so when you're gonna cut your, your steaks, you're gonna cut up in little slabs and break them down, okay? This is what you're gonna do because I make so many of them. Now, you're once you take your slabs out, now I'll probably just go, at, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to go too extensive into using them, but you get the idea, right? So here's your tuna steaks. Now they don't have to be huge, okay? So I probably want to, this is probably where I want my tuna balls, is probably like this. So give you an idea on my, on my bubble blade about how big they, that you want them, okay? So with that being done, now one of the things was is that I'm using spawn net and I didn't know what to call it. I kept calling it a mesh and then I ended up in mesh and surgeries and when I was YouTubing it and when I was trying to order them because trying to right now find anything in Cabela's, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty lame at carrying things. Their inventory is bad. Uh, they don't keep up with, with what's going on. To me, they just don't know what's going on. Whoever's stocking everything, uh, it's just a mess. So I started becoming more relying on ordering everything through uh, the internet. And one of the things I kept looking at mesh and I could not for the life of me figure out what it was. So it's called spawning net, spawn net. So this is what the other thing that you're gonna have when you make your tuna ball. The next thing is, we call it we call it magic line, so it, and it's actually called magic thread. So this is will be another tool that you're going to want to use to make sure that you're using this. We started out using, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, eight pound test. We we're using our fishing line to make sure we we're wrapping them. Man, it was so sucky. It sucked. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to take out my spawn net. You want to make sure you always have your spawn net. The thing is, you want to always get it when you can. If they're going on sale, buy it. Just just buy one or two at a time. That's what I always suggest to everybody. Don't go try to like buy it all at once and break the bank because, uh, I don't know. That's last, last minute shopping. So I'm going to take my magic thread out to the brand new one. And I'm going to set everything else to the side. So we have our spotting net and our magic thread. And so... A lot of times I have issues with this because it gets hung up and I don't know whoever, I don't know, we need to, I need to have a discussion with whoever puts this together. Give us a starting point on everything because it sucks when you have to waste a bunch when you're just trying to figure out, okay, where is the beginning of it? So, all right, we found out the beginning of it, okay? So we have our spawning and our magic thread and there we go, right? So now I'm going to back out a little bit. Now we're going to take a little chunk of our... Uh, our spotting net and most of the time I'm going to cut it with my scissors when I'm out on the river anyway so or when I'm doing it at night before I go to the river that's the best thing to do is do like I don't know 100 of them or something just no, I'm not really joking I'm being pretty, pretty serious about that too so you never have to do it when you're at the river right okay so we take our small chunk of tuna steaks now we're going to set it 
inside of our, our spawn net and you're going to loop it up, right? It's like that. And then you're going to twist it a little bit. Now you're going to take your magic thread and you're just going to wrap it around. Make sure it's nice and tight too so it's not all flaky or and it falls off. Make sure it's nice and tight. So now we're going to take our scissors and then we're going to lop off the excess stuff. We don't really want too much excess on there. We want it nice and neat because what happens is if I have stuff like the magic thread floating around on there or anything like this, it gets round. It actually gets around the hook and it starts messing up everything around here. And then sometimes I've even found it when it just messes, it gets on top of the hook and I lose fish because it, I can't set them because it's basically like dolling it. So anyways, moving along. So, okay, there is my tuna ball. Now the next thing I use is, right now I'm using anise and bloody tuna super gel, but sand shrimp is the other thing I really love using is sand shrimp, uh, bloody tuna, or anise and mixing it all together, make some sort of concoction, whatever it is. These are my kind of go-to things. I really don't have a preference to who I use. Normally it's just whatever's cheapest, honestly it is. If it smells like sand shrimp, bloody tuna, I'm getting it. Okay, so I'm gonna take my beads out. I didn't wanna lose them, so I stuck them in here. So you wanna have some, I'm just using, just cause this is a demonstration, I'm just using something some Tupperware of some type that is fairly big to have your 100, 100 tuna balls in there. And what I'll do is just dump this into my uh, into my little Tupperware. And then I'll probably put sand shrimp oil over it, maybe a little bit of water. But most likely, then I'll just throw my tuna balls in there, right? So I'll keep adding that in there and adding it in there. So then... Let's go over one of the my other tuna ball that I'm going to use so that I'm not having to smell really rank. But just to go over it fairly fast. And here's my tuna ball. And then here's my magic string. So make sure that it's nice and tight. That it's really tight and it's not all over the place. Get it nice and tight. And you can just break it off. That's the cool thing about it. It just breaks off and then you can lop it off at the end. And then there's your tuna ball. So here's our tuna ball for example and I'll move everything else out of the way. I have a bad habit of clearing my hands because everybody knows I work at the casino and I teach cash hiring so sometimes I do that. Alright so the the hooks I use are three out hooks, gamma got shoes. I really don't stray past anything besides that. I used to use fours a lot but then it's just too big so I stay with threes. And uh the other thing I get asked constantly is that uh, my the line I use is 40 pound monofilament Cabela's salt striker line. Now the real reason why I really love this is because it has a memory and it works with me so well that I just adore it so much. And now you can't find this in stores so you have to go on there and you have to almost put it verbatim word for word 40 pound monofilament strike or sorry salt striker all right if that's what you want to do if not then don't do it don't worry about it how i measure about it is i always just go about for my shoulders when i pick it put it out when i'm tying my hooks and i'm not really going to go too much into tying my hooks because uh, i'm trying to show how i do my tuna balls which is i've already have so now i'm going to tie my hooks real quick show everybody how fast I am and how good I am at it and three four five six I don't know seven now the one other thing that I want everybody to remember is once you do once you're tying if you have not tied your hooks or I would say even with you are tying wait back it up do we want to get fancy and put a bead in there nah we'll wait we'll wait on that that's that, I think that's kind of going overboard right now so we'll just keep it simple so, all right, so the one thing you always have to make sure you have is your clippers. Make sure they're big clippers and make sure they're sharp. So we're gonna cut the end off, make sure we have a little tail so that way once the fish bites, it pulls it and it cinches it up. And I'm just gonna tie this other part really again. And I really did the other parts, uh, I did one 
on tying hooks really so if you want to get more into that I did one exactly how you should do it or how I do it not how you should do it if, if you want to use what I do then that's up to you but give me an example like when you're sitting there watching me tie hooks right by you then this is like the normal speed that I go and I'm probably talking to you at the same time distracting you while you're fishing and I'm still trying to tie my hook because I got it snagged on a rock or something but give you an idea of how fast I go at it cinch it down to the other one and then I cinch it up really good and then I'll run it back through the eye in this case I'm going to actually use an egg, egg bead to run through it because maybe if it's out there it's more appealing but when I'm drifting I def definitely like to have an egg or a corky on my double hook and so this is for the Columbia uh, if you're not enrolled Yakima then I don't know I really don't know what the, uh, the the rules are for that I guess and so then one thing is the other thing is moving along not trying to get into that but if you can't do that then don't use double hooks and if they're not if you can't use barb then don't use barb but we can so then I'm gonna put my other my other egg uh, my other egg bead I can find it <clears throat> my other egg bead at the bottom then I'm gonna run my cheater through it too like that all right so that looks pretty sexy if you ask me now the next thing is is that uh, I always like to use the bigger swivels the better regardless of what if I'm fishing in smaller water or not I like it because it causes separation between the the, the sinker or whatever I'm using so I use a three-way swivel brass number twos. The bigger, the better. And I really like these because they're so flexible and, and use. And then again, <clears throat> excuse me. I like to use a snap swivel because uh, most of the time I go, I take naps and whatnot when I'm out there. So I like to use everything that will, like eventually I don't want them t tangling up and getting all. Uh, let's see. I do know how to open this. I like to think I do. But right now I don't have my snap swivels. I don't even know where they're at. Somewhere in the garage. So I'm going to just run it through, do my regular fisherman's knot. I'm not, like, I've gone into the tutorials before, so I'm not trying, I'm, we're all about doing the tuna, tuna, tuna balls today. So then I'll, once I do my regular fisherman's knot, now maybe sometimes you wonder why my fingers are always sticking out. I broke it when I was playing football, so it sticks out like that automatically. I can't bend it very well, so I I should be using my my index, my pointer finger, but you'll see me not using. It, so that's why. So then once I did that, I'll tighten it up and run it down. And then so here is my setup. Now one thing is whether you're using single or double, you want to latch it on right at you want to latch it on right on the edge okay and make sure it goes all the way through the barb if not a barb then then there if it's not a barb then you just want to still put it on in okay so then that's what it looks like so there's your tuna ah, there's your tuna ball with your cheater your double hooks single hooks whatever you want you want to use now one of the things that I do too is I make my own molds when I'm drift when I'm drifting into the smaller rivers and I won't really go into that I'll go into that on a different YouTube but I do my own molds <clears throat> so when I'm drifting I'll, I'll I'll dump it in there and then I'll pop it open and then I'll have my my eyes already in there and then I'll have my mold so then the next thing you'll want to do is I always will leave it on there and then run it through your eye the thing is I don't run it very much I'll do maybe two or three boom and then I'll probably use a smaller a leader from from the from the sinker because in case it snags up I want it to break the leader off from the sinker and not onto my five dollar cheater I'm exaggerating of course I exaggerate a lot alright so now depending on the depth of the water it will depend on how far in this case we're just going to be running fairly short and i like to run it longer so when you're cheating ow 
So when your cheater is in there, when it's on there, like this, it'll be longer, so it will be able to bounce up and down within that water. But if you don't want to, if it's shallow, like it's only three feet, you don't want it being five feet where it's bouncing off the top of that or whatnot. Same thing with when I tie it to my three-way. I'll just do maybe two or three because I don't want it taking my whole gear and spending all day setting up again. Because you see how long this is already taking doing just a regular setup. So once I've done that, then bam, my tuna ball. And then of course you're gonna dump all the rest of your you're gonna dump all the rest of your other stuff on there all over. Don't be shy about it. Even put it on your finger or everywhere on your line. Get it all stank, all rank, like a bull and rep. So we'll have it like that. And when it sits down, whoops, when it sits, sits down. So then it'll go. So when you're picking out colors too, remember if it's spinning, then that like if a black and a black and yellow, well it's gonna make a brown or whatever like that. So think about that too. So when you see it spinning, look at it. Make it let it spin or blow blow on it and, and see what colors it blows. And uh, so this is basically the setup that I'll use for the Columbia when plunking, and that's how you'll make your tuna ball. Don't forget. <clears throat> To do them the night before, let them marinate in that tuna blood or the sand shrimp. One last thing too is the bells that I have. I got asked about my cowbells. So these are little three inch cowbells. Now that, that'll make anybody turn around and start running. So, But they are, uh, they're on party.com or something, partybell.com. Just look up three inch cowbell. And then when you get them, you can get them by the dozen, which is 12 and when you get them they're not going to have anything on them so all i do is just use bailing wire and then twist it and then put a little hook on there so then you can obviously hear this from everywhere even everybody that's fishing around you is like fish on so i hope this helped everybody with how i do my setup on everything from uh, the course when i'm fishing in the smaller rivers like the icicle the yakima the Wenatchee or anywhere else like that, then it's going to be smaller cheaters, smaller spinning glows, smaller sinkers. Of course, you're going to downgrade on everything else like that. So make sure that you subscribe to me. You like, tell me what you think. Uh, let me know. Other than that, fish on, brothers and sisters.